Hi guys, welcome to Ecuador Homestead. So today in this video, I'm going to be addressing how you can live in Ecuador for $1,000 a month and still have plenty of money left over. Coming up. What's up everybody at YouTube? How is everybody doing? So today in this video, I'm going to be covering how to live in Ecuador under $1,000 a month, still have plenty of money left, and I'm going to go through all the expenses that we pretty much have here in Ecuador. So let's get into it. Okay, so the first one we have here is rent. Rent is about at $500 a month, high at most. You're not going to pay any more than $500 a month for rent. Let's keep that in mind so you're not going to be paying any more. You can probably get it in a house in the gated community. You probably could get which, uh, a good house for about $300 a month. At the very most, it's going to be $500 a month. So if you're looking at a gated community, know that that's the price. One time we did pay $500 a month for a house, but that was a little bit better when that was a little long time ago, about four years ago when we had, when the economy was a lot better. Now the economy is not as good, so it's $300 a month. Maybe if the economy goes back up, then it'll be $500 a month, but currently right now it's $300 a month for a relatively good house in the, in, in a gated community. Now, one of the things, we've rented a house down to $60 a month, but the house is worth $60 a month that we lived like the locals, okay? So, of course, I know the average Americans do not want to come here to Ecuador and live like the locals. Uh, I, nobody, no, not one American wants to live like that, so I'm going to set it out for you guys really to live an awesome life here. Plenty of money left over, and I'm not talking about like just eating the... The crap food, no, I'm talking about getting the organic food, the best food for you, and still have plenty of money left over. So now the next thing you're, I'm going to address for you guys is food. The big thing, now I'm trying to do a couple, okay, uh, a couple that has come here with a pension or social security or some, some type of form of money from the government, a thousand dollars, okay, that's what I'm trying to cover here. So two people, a couple, okay, so they come here. $200 a month for two people, I would think, is about right to live, you know, to be able to pay for the best food, eat organically, and eat out occasionally here and there. So I would have to say $200 a month is probably good. And so that's, so far that is $700 a month. And so now we're going to really start getting to the lower stuff, like, for instance, power. Power, if you're using the dryer, the lawn, the, the dryer, the washing machine, whatever, whatever appliances you may be using, at max, you're probably going to spend $30 a month. So that's kind of a shocker to some people. Another thing here it is, is internet, okay? Everybody has to have internet. <laughs> well, you know, a bunch of Americans want internet. I want, I like to have internet because I do video production. It makes it easier to upload and so that I don't have to go to a internet store and pay to get on the internet. I like to be able to have the internet in the house and be able to upload a video quickly. And people want to have close connections to relatives in the United States and be able to get on Facebook or whatever occasionally. So internet, $21 a month, unless you want really high internet. We're, good very good quality internet which is thirty dollars a month water you may be shocked about this one water at max is probably even if you're doing laundry with the with the washing machine at max you're going to spend five dollars a month yes it's it's not as much money as but a bunch of people think and i know there's other small factors of money in here that you're not adding up Okay, so like gas, propane, propane gas. This stuff is subsidized by the government, okay? Every tank would cost about $20 a, a tank, but instead it costs two, actually, sorry, three fifty if you get the, the trucks driving around. There are trucks that drive around and sell gas. If you get it at the distributor, it's two fifty, And so that is awesome. The government subsidizes that. So... You're probably going to spend at max if you're drive if you're getting it from the trucks that are driving around about nine dollars a month. If you're count counting the stove, the dryer, and if you're if you got hot water, your most hot water heaters have 
have um, gasoline, uh, propane usage, and so that as well. So really, that that's all I have on the list right now. But of course, there's other things like, and all this comes together at seven hundred sixty-five dollars. So that's not bad at all. But there's other things, and like one of them is if you're going to live in a gated community, community, you're going to have an expense where you have to pay a small fee of like forty to fifty dollars to live there, and so okay, you take on another fifty dollars, but still seven hundred fifty. Uh, you know, it's seven hundred, it's eight hundred and fifteen dollars. Is that correct? Yeah, eight hundred fifteen dollars. Just if it, if you count it at max fifty dollars a month, still that's not really that much. No. Okay. So now, what are other things you're gonna have? So now I just counted the food really, and sorry, I gotta see that. I'm gonna pop that guy. Yeah, I got. Her. Okay. So now. The the food, like, of course, people don't want to stay cooped up in the house all the time, just barely make, want to make it by. They want to feel free to be able to go out and do certain things at certain times. They don't want to have to stay at home all the time and not be able to do anything. So, like, you think transportation, one of them. Transportation, depending on how you're going to transport, do transportation, are you going to do a taxi, or are you going to have a car, or are you going to take the bus? The bus is the cheapest, the taxi is is the, probably the most expensive and the car is, is it goes the bus is the cheapest the next is the car but you have to buy a car you know and the third is the taxi so now if you're gonna have a, a if you're gonna take the bus it's about from, depending on how far you are away which you probably want to stay within a couple mile a couple kilometers away from town which is probably you know, 10 kilometers, you probably would say about 50 cents to get to town. So 50 cents, that's not bad. 50 cents one way. So one dollar, if you're going to go to town, then it's one dollar, basically, there and back. And let's say you're going to go to town twice a week. So that's a two dollar two dollar expense. But it gets a whole lot higher if you decide you're going to take a taxi. Taxi is probably going to be five dollars there and five dollars back. Okay, so now, what else? Oh yes, car, a car. First you gotta buy a car. Cars, you know, you can get a car for like $5,000 here in Ecuador. Pretty good. So that's awesome. And, I mean, that's another, and gas is subsidized, I believe, by the government. I forgot the price of it. I thought it was like, gasoline was $2 and something cents. Something odd cents, or maybe less than that. Diesel is cheaper than gasoline. That's one of the things I want to let you guys know. Diesel is cheaper than gasoline. Here, so that's somewhat surprising. Okay, so now I was... Oh, yeah, also one of the things I wanted to cover is, like, let's say you're making... Let's see, say you're bringing in, like, $1,500 a month. Well, you have more than enough money to pay for, like, a maid. And so maids here in Ecuador, you got to be careful for one thing because... If you choose the wrong one, they can be kind of not trustworthy and steal from you. And so we've had that happen just once. So like one time they stole somebody stole a phone from us. We but there's too many of us in the house that we found out and well we didn't fire her, we just we, we fired her but we just kind of we didn't say well you took our phone so we're firing you. We more said, Okay, we're letting you go. And so yeah, but there's there's trustworthy maids. You just gotta be careful which one. I recommend if you're gonna get a trustworthy maid, if you get a maid, you you go ask somebody in town that speaks English if they know of anybody, and that's the best way to go. If you're wondering the price that you should pay, work wage here in Ecuador is four hundred dollars a month. So that's the work wage. That that's how much you probably should pay them per month if you're going to hire a maid. Okay, one of the biggest mistakes that people make is that they're going to they go to the wrong place. They go to Banos or they go to the capital. That's the wrong place to go. You don't want to go to anywhere that has high that has a lot of Americans. Here's the reason. The reason is because when when you go there, there's gonna be the hotels are gonna be a lot more expensive, rent's gonna be a lot more expensive, food may be possibly a lot more expensive. Everything's going to be a lot more expensive, and so make it harder for you to make your $1,000 per month goal 
if you're going to be in a spot that's more ex that that has more expense. Quito is the same. There's probably not as many Americans as there is in Banos, um, such as percent wise, but Quito is the capital. But I recommend you like going to a province that doesn't have as many as Americans and is kind of in a poorer region. Like Morona Santiago is the is the province we're working with right now. So living in Morona Santiago for one thousand dollars a month is definitely plausible. That's basically what I'm addressing right now. And so, yeah, I mean, it's very cheap. And it's, it's not like your. Have you seen the market video that I put out for you guys on YouTube? You get to see all the nice, fresh food and stuff. I mean, it's definitely very fresh. And it's it's all fresh. And so that's why I'm talking buying the best food. Best food. You know, for somebody in the United States to try to eat organically, it's almost impossible. And so, I mean, you have to spend so much money. And here in Ecuador, you could just come here and live organically for less than $1,000 a month. So that's a big point that I want to point out to everybody. But the biggest thing people have is... The biggest thing people have is language barrier. That is the biggest problem when everybody comes here. Usually elderly people come here to Ecuador. And when they come, they, they want, you know, they... They don't know ink Spanish, and that's a big problem for them. And so then, you know, they can't, they can't speak to anybody. So I thought I'd throw that video out for you guys on YouTube because I thought I'd give a few nuggets. I was thinking about putting this on uh, Patreon, but I'm going to put it on Patreon, but I'm just going to make it free for everybody to watch instead of nobody. I'm going to make sure everybody gets it for free. So, yeah, I hope you enjoyed that video. Also, if you want more videos like this one, go over to Patreon slash Ecuador Homestead. Become a Patreon and you can get a lot more videos like this. Also, if you want a few more videos like this, like advantages and disadvantages coming to Ecuador, I'll link in the YouTube card or in the description below that video, advantages and disadvantages coming to Ecuador. You need to watch that one too. Basically, I lay out a few more things there. And so some people believe that's not safe here in Ecuador, but I probably, uh, uh, it's, it's really safe here, guys, in Ecuador. A bunch of people think it's not safe for Americans, but it actually is. I think I worded things wrong and people took it that I was not, that it was not safe in Ecuador. But it's safe in Ecuador. So I hope you enjoyed that video. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you go over to play, check, us over, check us out over on Patreon. And I'll see you next time in Ecuador. I'm said, bye.